Take something new under the sun mm. You can't take back some things You're already done, done No You blame things that you do On somebody else Good evening, everyone. Welcome to another crypto chat. Uh, sorry we canceled it on Sunday, but I think it was good we canceled it because here we have amazing news for the whole crypto community. Uh, this was just announced today. We There have been some leaks uh, two days ago, but it, it's officially uh, announced today. Uh, we're going to tell it. We're going to discuss about it in just two minutes. We're going to wait for everyone to join in. So let's say uh, hey to Elvis. Oh, yeah. Hello, Elvis. Hello, Moses. Uh, let's see. Love from India. Yeah. It's 10.30 p.m. Oh, what wonderful. You're watching. Uh, if it's a bit late for you, we're sorry. Costandinos. Hey, from Cyprus, I suppose. Uh, hey, Emeka, if I'm saying that correctly. Hello, Al Mohammed. Okay, so we'll dive in immediately. Let's wait just five minutes for everyone to join in because uh, for everyone who missed the live stream on, uh, actually didn't miss, we cancel it. But we delayed it until today, but uh, let's see if everyone will join in. Let's see the thousands of likes. Yeah, Kledos, one of our admins in uh, TFA. Okay. Kalispera in Greek. Yeah, we didn't speak any Greek for uh, never. Yeah, we have to say it in Greek as well. Maybe we have to learn a little bit Nigerian, a little bit Spanish, so we can treat all over the world. Uh, hello, Steve. Hello. Okay, so let's dive in immediately. Uh, everyone who doesn't know, uh, for the past two weeks, it's it feels like a crypto war. And uh, I want to show this quote from Gandhi uh, that I, I think for sure a lot of people know Gandhi. So let's show this. Uh, first, they ignore you. Then they laugh at you. Then they fight you. Then you win. <laughs> yes. So we're going to start off with this wonderful and strong uh, quote. And we're going to go immediately to... Uh, the all over news for that has been happening. Okay, we yeah. cover a lot of news, a lot of bad news for crypto the last week and the, uh, the week before that. But let's see uh, just a couple of headlines for the past week. Bit Bitcoin is falling, a uh, crackdown on a ransom, uh, ransomware. That may be a good thing in the long run. Okay, let's see another one. Uh, X Internet Enforcement Chief says crypto investors are enabled. Enable, okay, that's another about the attack on ransomware. I don't know if you know any more anything about that. Or yeah. <clears throat> yeah, so I mean, it's part of the negative war. <clears throat> and uh, we're going to get into the context of it for, you know, again, we get new people who don't know much about crypto, and we have some crypto experts, and we have some people uh, in between. So we'll, we'll try to help everybody <clears throat> get a little bit of information on what's happening from uh, all the different perspectives. But, you know, uh, if if you're not into crypto, you probably just hear the the bad news mm -hmm. you know the stuff that's on the mainstream media like those headlines that you showed they're they're um and this is part of a war this is a financial war yeah. they're really scared oh yeah we forgot donald trump came out and said <laughs> oh, bitcoin yeah. is oh, a scam God. so uh yeah yeah so so what was he? he he said it's a scam and it's a threat to the dollar mm. so how can a scam be a threat to the dollar <laughs> i mean but you, you can hear the language that people are using. So in the news, you're going to hear, oh, Bitcoin is bad and Bitcoin is used in ransomware. And Donald Trump says Bitcoin is a scam. <clears throat> you know, when we're talking Bitcoin, you know, we're, we're advocating the whole industry uh, of decentralized uh, tokens that, you know, people can create value in. And, you know, it is a war. And, and Gandhi's quote that you put up there is perfect. And, and, and the first they ignore you is the, 20 2009 mm. till 2013 yeah uh bitcoin was uh largely ignored not many people knew about it then um it started to go and after it pumped up in 2017 and then crashed <laughs> well that's when they laughed that's when everybody started mm. to, to laugh it's uh, a bubble <laughs> they're still yeah. saying it now yeah. there's still people still saying it uh you're still saying it now but the laughing part 
after Bitcoin then went on another rampage. Yeah. And, you know, in one year, um, it's hard for to people to imagine that um, I think it was in March of 2020, Bitcoin briefly dropped to three thousand dollars. Now it's mm, thirty six thousand, yeah, yeah. so it dropped in half now, but it's still up ten times from yeah. what it was one year ago at a low point. So yeah, we got financial war going on, and now we're at the then they fight you <laughs> point of the war. <laughs> and we've been talking about this for the last three or four chats. We were, you know, we were saying we're going to go into detail on it today. You know how they're fighting this, and yeah, yeah, uh, Bitcoin, and other cryptos, China, we were blocks. Re uh, yeah, yeah. I got confirmation. China. This is true. I talked to some friends of mine who are in China. They're behind the firewall, and they said it is a big crackdown. They can't create accounts easily. Mm -hmm. They're um, the miners are being shut down. Um, <clears throat> they're really slowing things down and making it really hard for people in China. And China is a very big crypto market. Yeah. So that's the war part. You know, it's China. It's Donald Trump. It's the uh, big media, the big banks. There. Um, trying to scare people away from crypto, which was just exploding. Yeah. Uh, uh, you remember, uh, if everybody who's been following our crypto chat has been watching, you know, we went into the euphoria when it hit 2.6 trillion. Yeah. But let's take a look. Uh, on the so coin. for the past yeah. days, uh, for everyone who cannot see, we were the lowest, I think it was 1.4. 1.4 trillion. 2.6, like three weeks ago when we were celebrating. They yeah. dropped us down. That was yesterday. One point four. One point four was a horrible feeling. I mean, yeah. it was it was a dark day. It was very that was very yesterday. Low. And today, <laughs> we had amazing news for the whole today. Crypto. Was, today was huge. We're going to go into the celebration. And we <laughs> we should be wearing some uh, some proper uh, uh, South American clothes so for this episode. But Bitcoin was uh, almost three thirty thousand. I've seen a lot of people shorting Bitcoin for thirty thousand, betting against it. Well. Uh, now, let's let's stay on the market cap though because yeah, it's one point six again. That's the key thing. It, they it, they knocked it back in thirty days in the war. Yeah, the psychological war, which started with the clown, otherwise known as Elon Musk, right? <laughs> and then China banned Bith Bitcoin again for the yeah. fifth time this year, and now they they pumped it back down to one point six, and they briefly got it down to one point four. So it was for people, it, it was bad. You know, a lot of a lot of people. Uh, who had bought in in the last uh, two months at a negative uh, return so far, which uh, you know shows you gotta you gotta be in for the longer yeah. term because in the short cycles it can definitely go up and down. Yeah, for sure. So the big news, guys, was of course. Yeah. Anyone who doesn't well, know. Well. Yeah. Uh, maybe I want to put, put it up. I want to put the music as well. Yeah, you gotta right put now. the music yeah. too. <laughs> We should really be wearing some sombreros or something. I don't know if they, they wear them in El Salvador, but yeah, maybe they do. So here it is. <laughs> El Salvador becomes the first ever country in the world to adopt Bitcoin as legal tether after this is passing huge. the law. Yeah. Unbelievable, unbelievable. And this is the fire back in the war. And, you know, it's the big guys against the small guys. It's the people against the big machine. Yeah. And here you got the the small country uh, the small adopting country, yeah. in the darkest day of the last of this year on yeah. Bitcoin and cryptocurrency. El Salvador pulled through. And here is the official tweet of the president. The Bitcoin law has been approved by my supermajority, 62 votes out of 30 out of 84. So here is a cool photo of the people that vote for Bitcoin. And let's show a fantastic stat. Uh, yeah. 2.6 million followers for a small country. The president. Yeah. The president. Naib. I, 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 yeah. I don't know his pronunciation, <laughs> but President de, de la Republica de, de El Salvador. El Salvador. <laughs> Forgive me, El Salvadorians, yeah. for butchering this, but we're so proud of them. 2.6 million followers yeah. now because this is historic. And TFC did something historic this week, too. We're going to get into yeah. that. But this was historic for the industry. This is amazing. So this is just amazing. And actually, that caused uh, Bitcoin to bounce up from 32,800 this morning to 36,000. Uh, that and some other yeah. news, but isn't if it we have fantastic. anyone from the stream that is watching from El Salvador? Yeah, let us know. We have any. Yeah. We have anybody <laughs> from uh, South America, 
Central America. Let's see um, what's going on there. Yeah, if we say hello, yeah. and we'd love to talk to you as well. Uh, put up this thing about um, uh, what you got on the screen there yeah. as well. So uh, here's a cool footage. A lot of people pop those up. Yeah. photos up. Yeah. So you know, this is this is on the ground. Huh? I mean, Bitcoin. Uh, yeah, Bitcoin training. Really yeah. Yeah. So this is a country where only 35% of the people have access to a bank account. Mm. However, more of them have access to phones and that's just a, they're going to skip banking. They're just going right to the phone, right to the crypto world. And they had a billion reasons to do this. Uh, El Salvador, it's, uh, I don't, we're not going to really go too much into the psychology of why they did it. It's obvious. They believe they're going to make money, but let's hear the guy. Isn't this amazing? Let's yeah. hear Al Salvador, a member of Congress, addresses Bitcoiners around the world after they passed the law to make it legal. Bitcoiners around the world, the time has come. We are ready. We did our part. Now the ball is on your side. Thank you. Yeah, he feels like a, a revolutionary speech, uh, which he did. I mean, it's, yeah, this is a history. Yeah. This is history. This is We're history. living the history. All through our crypto chats, guys, if you've been paying attention, just historic moments that we're pointing them out. The thing, it's happening very, very fast. You can't listen much to the news. You got to actually look at what's really going on. You have to look at uh, alternative sources, um, you know, uh, talk with different people with different perspectives because you're not going to hear, you know, when there's a war, you're only going to hear from the media, the one side, you're not going to hear the other side, yeah. but this was too big. And it, it's where it really can't, uh, uh, you know, overestimate. Um, I think this is a good point to say it won't be the last. Yeah. Now the president said it. Yeah. We, we were talking about this. Um, I think we might've said it last week. We were, you know, we were talking about inflation a lot last week and uh, that it's going to weaken the dollar. And yeah. a lot of countries are going to want to get out of the dollar. Uh, they're holding a dollar that they don't create and is getting worth less in its value as as uh, they print more of this. Yeah. So for everyone who doesn't know, just to explain it for everyone how big it is, they accept Bitcoin to pay your debt back, to pay the government. Or what else can you do when you're well, a legal once, tender? It's once like it's a, legal tender, you know, everything. But the most one of the most important things is it means you don't have capital gains tax. Mm. So, you know, um, in other countries they're they're treating it as an asset. Okay, yeah. So yeah, yeah, yeah. if you make a profit on your Bitcoin yeah. trade, um, uh, you have to pay a, a tax on the capital gain. And theoretically, it could, you know. Holding Bitcoin even a day, you could have if you switch it over to Ethereum and switch it back, you have a taxable yeah. event potentially. So when they're treating it as a currency, they're getting you out of um, a capital gains tax. They're taking the fear factor for their citizens out, and it means everything's possible. It means you could open, um, you know, if it's legal tender, you, you know, yeah, that yeah, means yeah. the banks are going to start allowing you to open Bitcoin accounts there. You would You're going to be able yeah, to yeah. pay the government with Bitcoin for your taxes and or, yeah, yeah, yeah. electricity or whatever. Yeah. I mean, it, it's, it's, it's still incremental. It doesn't, it's not like the whole, but the point is it's big. Yeah. And it's that's big because it's the first country in the world to do <laughs> such a thing. So it's, it's fantastic. <laughs> and, you know, to point this out, that doesn't mean that Bitcoin is not legal everywhere else in the world. What they're saying is it's the first time they're making it legal tender, an actual legitimate currency, yeah. a legally recognized currency. Bitcoin is legal almost everywhere in the world, but as an asset. And uh, uh, it's treated in a different way. Yeah. Uh, you know, so, but this is, this is a big step forward. This is Bitcoin being treated as money mm -hmm. by a country straight out. Yeah. So like the headline says, it won't be the last. And we have a few more headlines. Nebraska, a well, framework for yeah. digital bank assets. Did we showed that one. The last, uh, oh, yeah, it yeah, won't yeah. be the last country. Yeah. There could be a hundred small countries could do this. Um, why would, you know, they have a lot of advantage to hold the, the Bitcoin. They believe that it's an asset of limited supply. Yeah. You can pay other countries with it. Um, it's got big liquidity and it's got upside, you know, and uh, that it's all upside for 
uh, El Salvador. Yeah. They obviously believe they're going to make a lot of money by uh, making this move, of course. Yeah. Uh, they're hoping to attract Bitcoin people to come there as residents, to buy property there. They're incentivizing residency. Uh, it gives them an alternative asset to hold. If they're only holding U.S. dollars and the dollars are becoming worth less year by year, now inflating, they're much better off holding um, Bitcoin. Uh, it's, very, it's hard for El Salvador to get gold. You know, <laughs> and How are you going to pay uh, your bills with gold? But um, they could be paying big bills in Bitcoin. Um, mm. people are paying uh, big uh, international transactions are happening in Bitcoin, even oil transactions, uh, big agricultural transactions. It's, uh, it's a trusted uh, mechanism for big payments, uh, e even with its volatility, you know? Yeah. Um, so, yeah, histor historic stuff. And part of that you, you show in here is <clears throat> Nebraska, which is a state, not a country. Yeah, but and Texas. Nebra yeah, and Texas and Wyoming states inside the u.s are doing the same thing u.s itself as a country is not but the states one by one certain states are doing what elvis salver is doing not as far as they went but they're creating frameworks very friendly frameworks trying to attract bitcoin people trying to make money from that yeah yeah and then you got miami they, coin well we don't know what it my, is we miami just saw it hosted today. The, the whole crypto event this year like uh, two days ago yeah yeah so I, we know Miami is a huge crypto supporter. And now they come up with this headline. I think this is today's news. Uh, yeah, it's just yeah. from a few hours yeah, ago. Yeah, so Miami coin is a new thing that is coming up. Uh, from what we understand, it's going to be like uh, you're going to use Bitcoin in stacks because it's on, it's on the stacks blockchain. It's not officially out. The, well, it's announced, but it's not out there. It's, com it's coming soon. Well, it's going to be like a w staking wallet, if I understand correctly, yeah. where you're going to stack certain cryptos or you're going to stack you the can, city you can donate to the yeah, city you donate to the city with this and they they into a staking account you're giving a gift and they take it but then they pay you back, uh, yeah. back rewards, bitcoin yeah. and rewards <laughs> but you get the idea el salvador miami which is a city um wyoming texas which are states and other small countries are adopting cryptocurrency because it's useful if it wasn't useful, why would these people do this? And it's popular, it's useful. And this is really a good sign because it's very important to us as a TFC community. Yeah. We're in all in the same boat with the Bitcoin people in terms of legal frameworks. We really need these things to keep happening. Yeah. We really want, we, we, as we know, as a community, we're very comfortable with um, what our use cases are. We want the industry as a whole to keep moving forward in general and yeah. we believe that's a big benefit for our community as well so yeah so this this is um you know again tonight is a mega chat so you know yeah, crack, yeah. get a cold drink chill out <laughs> get your feet up um and we're going to be here for a little bit because there's just a lot of good things yeah. as the cover. viewers as the viewers know we predict and you especially predict a lot of stuff we 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 saw the whole uh one trillion two trillion we, we cover a lot of things. So if you were asked, Sabrina, predictions of which country will follow. <laughs> yeah, this... Um, well, we don't know. Uh, I, I'll make us some predictions for that. <laughs> let's go for it. Um, let's make some predictions. I think, um, well, states, but they're not countries. You know? okay. So you can see more states in, in, in the U.S. But I think you're going to see more. Uh, you're definitely going to see them coming from <clears throat> countries uh in uh central and south america small countries maybe ecuador right. uh, maybe costa rica maybe honduras maybe nicaragua um certainly some african countries are going to come soon into this game yeah and um i would say that you know between central america south america and um uh and African countries, you're going to see them coming from there, and they're going to be small countries, uh, countries that are the world has kind of left aside yeah. a little bit. That that you know um, they're going to come in, and they have nothing to lose. Uh, the bigger countries get a lot of pressure put on them for doing this. You're going to see some island things as well, something like you know Seychelles, of course, okay. um, uh, Bermuda. Uh, uh, Bermuda, you'll see countries like this think about doing this now. I, f I have a feeling about Colombia. 
Oh, I don't know. I think, ooh, <laughs> Colombia, you know, they're big. They can be pressured a lot. Yeah. They have a lot to lose. Any country that has a huge debt um, to the U.S., they're under uh, a lot of leverage. Yeah. So, um, you know, but but it's a domino effect. So I think, again, um, <clears throat> my guess would be, some, you know, like Liberia and um, yeah. Seychelles and uh, Honduras but and for sure uh, it's Costa gonna Rica. Be, it's going to take uh, uh, Panama. Oh, yeah. Um, um, it's going to cause a Nicaragua. Effect. Yeah. That's the main thing. Yeah, yeah for sure. Yeah, they're, they're going to come in. And then it'll just keep trickling. I, I expect there'll be 100 countries that do this. And once 100 countries do this, Andreas, can you imagine <laughs> what will happen, how different the world will be? And and what uh, it, it's almost uh, well. Incredible. Can you imagine the countries? If we're at a point like a uh, hundred countries, a hundred uh, countries accepted as a legal tender, can you imagine the situation of the countries that are not? <laughs> mm, yeah, you're <laughs> going to see a going to see a bit of a divide. Yeah, so we're going to talk about the fundamentals uh, in a few minutes. I'll go yeah. through. Let's put up the first part of the code. Yeah. So it's been 20 minutes. Uh, so that's the first part of the code, guys. S let's see if anyone has any questions. We we will uh, spend some time today to cover most of your questions uh, that we can answer. Of Here course. we go. Nigeria will will not be among the early countries. Yeah, this is okay. true. But the adoption is at the grassroots level. It's true. It's uh, it's the governmental levels are are going to be. Uh, it's going to be difficult for these countries. But once the the people are all in, they'll have to come across later. Uh, Panama very soon. Moses says, yeah, they agree. Uh, Stanley Panama. Anthony says uh, Colombia. So he agrees with you. That would be interesting. <laughs> Uh, let's see some of our country. Panama very soon. I think that's probably, you know, that's definitely, uh, that's definitely my prediction as well. Some country like Panama. Yeah. And, uh, of course you, you wait, wait till you hear the backlash, get ready for the news. Mm -hmm. Wait, what they're going to find all kinds of, uh, are, they're going to find, uh, some, all these drug Lords hiding in the Hills of El Salvador. <laughs> they're going to find <laughs> terrorists hiding in the Hills. Who knows what negative things are going to start coming out. Just get ready to laugh because yeah. it's so predictable. Every single time one of these countries, you know, <laughs> wants to, wants to have a little bit of, uh, okay. yeah, why Zimbabwe. not? Why not? But you know, what you, you need countries where the leaders are young. 50 years old, 40 years old. The, You're not going to see it with countries where the, the leaders are 60. The president of El Salvador is 39. Yeah. So s same with Bermuda, the the, the, oh, yeah. the, the, the premier, the, uh, he's young. You're going to, you, wherever you have young leaders, you're going to see, uh, you're going to see that. So I think that's probably the best way to predict which countries are next is find, uh, find, uh, the young, uh, the young governments. Yeah. So let's move on, guys. Uh, of course, we have, we're going to take like a small break here. Here's some good, of course, we continue the good news before we oh, yeah. go to the next Let's topic. go through Mike, Michael, Michael Saylor. Michael Saylor, who was at the event with uh, Max Kaiser, where they, they attacked Elon a little bit. Yeah, yeah. He's, <laughs> there's a he's, history there, yeah. These guys are almost religious <laughs> zealots at this point. Okay? They call them Max Kapilas. Kapilas uh, like, like Kapila, uh, I cannot say Max yeah. Kaiser. I don't know what they're calling him, yeah. but whatever it is, he's the high priest of of Bitcoin. They say, and Michael Saylor yeah. is like John the Baptist here. But these guys are truly religious zealots. They're a little bit. It's a little bit over the top, but you you need that. You need that level of commitment. You know, if you're not committed mm. all in, I mean, these guys betting everything he has, everything he's built his whole life in here. With micro strategy, micro strategy yeah. announces once the price dumped down. He was, said it's a buying opportunity. Yeah. You know, price doesn't mean what's the value. If the thing is useful and it has a great potential and a great value, then good investors look at uh, when the price is low, they look at that as the time to buy. You know, the, it's it's really just about how useful and what's the potential of that asset to make return. So here, uh, Michael Saylor is, has a company called MicroStrategy. He raised another 500 million to buy Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. So he's borrowing money against his company to buy Bitcoin. And let me tell you, he raised 500 million he, and it was oversubscribed. There was $1.6 billion wanted in and he could only, <laughs> he only accepted 500 million. <clears throat> so, so you can see, you can see no matter what the news says, you can see the power of mm -hmm. this industry, the power of this community um it's going to be very hard for them to beat yeah 
you know, they're playing most of their tricks. You know, China's banning again was the seventh time, right? <laughs> <laughs> they're going to ban it uh, every five weeks, but they're not stopping it. So uh, this is, again, yeah. another part of the good news. And then I think we, let's go a little bit into the, uh, you know, what the other thing that's going to continue to drive it up, which is, hey, last week, yeah, we, we, we said, talked yeah. about inflation. It was, okay. Or the whole theme, it was about that, yeah. Yeah, we talked a lot about inflation. So, so Do I, Deutsche Bank. Deutsche Bank was listening. <laughs> <laughs> Warrants of global time bomb. Uh, yeah. coming due to rising inflation yeah, yeah. so 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 you know we, we we might sound like we're talking uh about you know uh because everybody always says doom and gloom is near and usually it never happens but when we're when we're saying inflation is here and you know they're printing too much money and it's going to get in the prices and it's going to hurt the poor people the most it's going to hurt the rich people don't get as infected affected from inflation because if you're if you if you make forty thousand dollars a month and your food bill goes from four hundred dollars yeah. to eight hundred dollars, you don't care. But if you make two thousand dollars a month and your food bill goes from four hundred dollars <laughs> to eight hundred dollars, this is a big deal. And so let's take a look at that chart because yeah. what they're playing with is heavy. Now, yeah. what this is a chart of the commodity food price index, and it's going back to two thousand and six. And we and have three red boxes, which yeah. the first two from where? Uh, 2011, 2000. The yeah. first is 2008. No, yeah, 2008, then 2010 ish to 2012, middle 12, yeah. Yeah. Now remember when, when, when those food prices went up like this, okay? And it happened in 2006 and it happened in 2011. It's happening again. Okay, now. This, this is what triggered. The Arab Spring, if you mm. can remember this, some some guy burned himself in the middle of the Whoa. thing because he couldn't afford to live anymore. Once people get to the point where they they lose it at a certain point, it becomes unbearable, right? So these rising food prices is happening again yeah. now. So this is not a good sign. Um, that means that's a sign of the dollar. Um, printing uh, gone out of control again and really affecting prices. And they don't have many tricks in their bag to slow that down. They're going to yeah. have to keep printing to keep the system going. And because the whole system is, is, is really insane. I mean, the system, we could talk all about the fancy buzzwords. I just yeah. don't even want to go into it. It really, at the heart of this system, they're, they're creating, somebody is creating money that they don't own, <laughs> that they didn't earn. They're in, creating it out of thin air and they're lending that yeah. to people at interest. This is insane. Yeah. This is barbaric. We cannot accept this kind of system anymore. We must shift to different models than that. We need a lot of different choices. And uh, we we need we need humanistic choices, you know, things where where uh, it's good for people, you know. Uh, what's good for people is good for everybody, yeah. right? So we we got to get out of these barbaric systems. But here, this this crazy horse thing is running into high commodity prices. So this is going to really scare people out of the dollars. You can see it's scared El Salvador out. Yeah. of the dollar and it's going to scare people into assets like uh cryptocurrency yeah. and it's going to create a lot of unrest unfortunately so um probably with that negative let's take a two minute break yeah. to go into some positive before we go into <laughs> the thing and let's just have a little celebration of El Salvador <laughs> and you know we'll keep an eye on what Jerome Powell is up to you know with his inflation machine um, he's going to be participating in the little two-minute celebration here of El Salvadorian culture and music so you're going to get a quick uh, visual tour of the beautiful country of El Salvador <laughs> Jerome is he's busy up there. 
He yeah. never rests to enjoy the <laughs> beautiful sights and the beautiful scenery because he's got to yeah. keep on with the printing machine. So you're getting some really good looks at El Salvador. Yeah. I mean, we know the negative side too. You know, it's a mine culture there, right? Mm. So they have incredible histories. Uh, um, beautiful beaches. They have surfing. Okay, they do have huge problems with like MS-13, <laughs> but you know that's part of the problem of the society. They had a civil war there that was funded by U.S. Right. So you know, let's give the positive energy to El Salvador yeah. that they can fix their country and be an example of how that can happen. And I hope TFC can play some role in that as well. So you know, um, definitely. Um, I'll have to make a field trip out there yeah. at some point. And 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 if anybody, we got to find some users. Uh, we got to uh, incubate some users. I'll 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 work on it. Yeah. We're gonna find some users in El Salvador and build up our community and start to get El Salvadorians to understand TFC. Also, so anyway, there was some yeah. vi visual, beautiful positivity of El Salvador. You could always keep your eye. You know, the, they never rest. Uh, Jerome Powell, the Federal Reserve, never rests. He's always printing money nonstop. He'll never stop. He can't stop. And they're going to, you know, blow the whole house down with it. So we need to be in <laughs> cryptocurrencies. And let's talk about um, what what fundamentals. So, so I'm going to go deep with you guys now. Some of you have seen this. Some of you have not seen this. I'm going to give you a, I'm going to give you a seven minute masterclass in crypto macroeconomics and geopolitics and i'm going to show you back to again we we keep referencing it what i predicted three years ago <clears throat> and the reason why i keep bringing it up because if you have a fundamental understanding of something you get the future right if if you really mm -hmm. understand the subject matter very very well what happens is you you tend to get the future right and if you if if you're guessing a future and a very few different future happens well you're missing something yeah. you could readjust you know but in this case it'll give you some confidence that you know we really do understand this subject matter and predict it and it will help you guys understand what's actually going on in this industry and when people ask me things like well you know is cryptocurrency real and uh isn't it just going up and down and isn't it just a house of cards and it could collapse and i saw in the news about something about ransomware that's all the basis they have they need knowledge yeah. so we're going to share a little so bit so let's go let's count uh seven minutes and three two one go here we go so this is the this is the presentation that I did, I think at least three years ago, it was called The Future of Blockchain and the Democratization of Money. I wrote it in less than 15 minutes on a plane on the way to Asia. Uh, skip to page two. <clears throat> uh, yeah, so fundamentally, and this is a theme that everybody knows that I've talked about, we're talking about the democratization of money and creating of a new golden age. Mm -hmm. When we had the democratization of politics, that was in a time in history in the Western world that was called the golden age. And it's not a coincidence that now that we're entering what the, did you know that actually the actual astrology of now is the golden age. It's okay. the age of Aquarius, actually mm -hmm. abundance. And this is actually the <laughs> in the time of astrology, the beginning of the golden age. And um, <clears throat> in any case, um, but it's not democratization of politics now. It's the democratization money. of money, community based money for that. We need the blockchain. And we need the community. And for many people now who are looking at um, the coin market cap and trying to buy cryptocurrencies, and I think it's only a small group of our users. We have a crypto bulls group, and I'm starting to see we have some really sophisticated uh, mm -hmm. buyers in there. But I, I see some immaturity levels on the idea that everybody hasn't made a big differentiation between um, blockchain as a technology and community-based money. Bitcoin is community-based yeah. money, okay? And you can see that it was money now because the, the country just recognized it. <laughs> yeah. Blockchain is a boring database, guys. It's. I know that that's not a popular opinion in the if I went and, and, and said that at a Bitcoin or at a, at a blockchain <laughs> conference, they would throw uh, things at me, but it is boring. Okay. And I'm a technologist and I understand the subject quite well. It's, it's boring. What's, what's interesting about blockchain is that it, it's distributed and governments cannot, uh, it, it allows systems to run without human beings. 
very simple systems, very simple logic, okay? So I'm a huge fan of blockchain, but it's got very limited use as a technology. I know that it can have a bigger uh, impact, but I'm saying in there three yeah. to 10 years for it to be big. So uh, I'm more interested in the societal impact. How can it help people's lives? And that has to be community-based economics. We'll go to the next one. Now, this is the market size, and this is very rough. You know, somebody could argue different points of it's too small, too big, but it's approximately correct. We're not talking about, you know, a market where there's a hundred billion dollars, yeah. you know, or um, NFT market can be, uh, you know, X, Y, or Z. We're talking about a market of 200 and 300, Four, three to four hundred trillion dollars. That's the economic token market. Mm -hmm. Right now, those tokens are the dollar, the the currencies of different countries, gold, silver, these different assets, different currencies from countries. And as of the time that I did this uh, presentation, Bitcoin is this, and the whole crypto industry is this tiny little sliver here in in this market. Three hundred billion, really nothing at all yeah. into this giant market. So the reason that I was excited about this industry is I saw that it's it's a huge market yeah. and we had a big enough start as a cryptocurrency community to get in there. You can continue on and uh, you can skip to the next slide too. So what, what I was saying at that conference and it made quite a splash because I was one of the first people to really quantify it for people and show them the numbers and the tipping points of that you don't have to, uh, you know, how the how the dynamics work of growth. So actually, when it when we went from 300 billion to a trillion, yeah. so many people made money, right? If people, if you have friends that had Bitcoin from back when, they got rich, and the and the stories go around, it creates a gold rush, and everybody wants to come in and make some money. So once you hit a trillion, you got so many people that made so much money that you're going to have a Bitcoin conference in Miami <laughs> where 14,000 people line up and the, the road the, to get in the conference is 20 blocks down the street. That's what happened there last week. You're going to have small countries adopting it. You see, a trillion is a tipping point at which you really can't stop the thing. That was my prediction from three years ago, everybody. Yeah. Uh, continue to the next one. Then and the prediction was the increase in wealth, you know, will will create a very fast cycle going from 1 trillion to 5 trillion. And once it goes to 5 trillion, it'll start eating the whole thing up. Like it'll go supernova. So when we're talking about the war, you know, what we were saying earlier, and um, we might have put some slides up last week about Jamie Demon. Yeah. <laughs> talking about, it, we got a, he was saying something about 5 trillion. They're worried that yeah. it'll hit this 5 trillion. And they went all in with Elon Clown Musk the China, this, that, they beat it back from 2.6 because it was going to hit 5 yeah. trillion, guys. If if it had gone a little, if it had a little push, it had gone right to 5 trillion in help. But it got the push back and they pushed it back from 2.6 to 1.5. So they're, it, it's still going to go to 5 trillion, but it might take a year yeah. to go there when it was only going to be three months if, if they hadn't beat it back. No one knows. I mean, I can't say that I know, but, you know, I'm saying yeah, that it, it seems like the energy dynamics are. So they, they seem to be aware of it as well. Once it hits five trillion and the inflation on the dollar is happening at the same time, you're going to get a race of people out of the dollar into the Bitcoin. You have countries adopting cryptocurrencies, Bitcoin, Ethereum, TFC, uh, different kinds of things. And that will force the companies on the screen to play this game because yeah. it's it's the biggest market ever created, guys. It's it's bigger than any market that you can think of. It's bigger than the oil market, the money, the creating of economic units, whether they're assets or d measuring certain kinds of things. You're going to get Apple, Google, and everybody. And when I when I said that back then, it looked silly, but. <laughs> Facebook has created Diem. Just go Google it, D-I-E-M, and see that they're, you know, they're they're ready to launch something. Apple and Google will come in. Uh, you'll see other countries coming in. You'll see other city of Miami. You know, I, I think I wrote it on the bottom. Scroll down a little bit. Um, 
I didn't write it there. I should have said cities, but I said nonprofits, churches, clubs, groups, cities, everything. Yeah, yeah. that was it, guy. So the the fundamental understanding that I have is that I know what the market size is. I know what the tipping points are. I know what the usefulness is. When you go and you try to use a bank now, it's a torture in Europe, especially. I don't know how it is in Nigeria. I don't know how it is in. I know how it is in U.S. It's really actually pretty decent the banking, uh, but Europe is horrible. Cyprus is horrible. It's like a prison. You cannot use your own money. You cannot. You're not free. It's 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 a torture. They don't lend money. They charge high fees. They don't serve the customer. They're they're the police system. Now they want to know and stop. Maybe it's because of pressure. I'm not saying uh, any judgments on the people. It's just it's a terrible situation. We need alternatives. You know, if you need to pay somebody at 11:30 p.m. on Thursday night, Ethereum, yeah, TFC, Bitcoin, boom, off it goes. Yeah, any time of the day or night. You don't need to justify anything. That you don't have to worry. You don't have to pay all those big fees. So actually, there is a very strong utility and a very big need that we have for freedom and independence. For actually having uh, uh, community-based money that uh, comes into existence through people yeah. and um, that gains value. Uh, comes in as equity instead of debt. And for any of you economics people out there, think about that. What I just said: equity versus debt. Money should be coming into being as equity through the people. It's not about political systems. It's not about communism and capitalism and everything in between. It's a simple technical change that money should not be created as debt. Who has the right to do that? It's insane. It creates so many problems. Uh, simply put it into being through the people as equity, and you'll have a lot more circulation. You'll have a lot more flow. You'll have a lot more Aquarian Golden Age energy, and it's not, um, and it's very, very realistic. It's very practical, and that's part of what's what's happening there. And that's uh, that's that. So yeah. fire away. So, yeah, you did nine minutes. So okay, that not good. bad. That was that was a nine-minute lecture on economics, on crypto, and everything, guys. <laughs> so uh, let's put up the second code, uh, the second part. Sorry, not the second code. Uh, so here it is, guys. Now we're gonna relax a little bit. I think we went a little bit deep today, a little bit more. We've done 17 episodes, which means we have to go deep, guys. We have we have fun here on the on every episode. We have but we like to teach people and explain them the simple stuff. Uh, so we will go to TFC news. Uh, before we go, just put up just a fun news. Revolut at Dogecoin. <laughs> uh, yeah. It's amazing to see Dogecoin again, a community-based token. Yeah, and, and our community should take note of it because Dogecoin is a community. That's all they have. They have a blockchain and they have a community. TFC has a blockchain, a community, and a massive enabling yeah. infrastructure in the middle. And so we've got a lot of horsepower there. But all credit, you know, we we give uh, you know the the cre a credit to a good community of Dogecoin people who really picked that up and made that thing yeah. a community-based token and showed the way forward. You know. I've always said I think people should be picking better tokens, but they haven't had a lot of choice. They don't know about us yet. They're going to find out about us. Yeah. Once they do, they're going to love it, but they don't know about it yet. So they're they're digging through uh, the meme coins. You know? So let's see. So let's reveal for everyone to see the big headline uh, from a Cy Cypriot site. Alki, a team in the second division in Cyprus, the official addition of a new transfer with cryptocurrency. Here's a sneak peek here, Alexander College, which accepts TFC. So you guess the coin that they use for this transfer, TFC. Yeah. And here we can put up some cool photos of uh, Steve and the football player, the name, which is David. Uh, Fantario. Fantario. Fantario, yeah. Yeah. So let's, 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 let's scroll again. Historic moment for the whole community of TFC, TFA, Panda. Uh, I don't know if anyone realizes how big this is. 
a transfer fee was paid uh, in TFC, a cryptocurrency, our cryptocurrency, the communities, the football currency, uh, the football coin, as we call it, of course, was paid for a whole transfer from Nigeria. You got it. A player was bought yeah. with TFC, guys. And I we have had, to explain we, it. The same we, had, <laughs> we had nothing to do with it. The team, listen, think the most incredible thing of the story and is this. The team that made the sale of the player for TFC is based in Lagos. Yeah. The Lagos Islanders. They didn't know our community. You know, they didn't know the power. They they knew enough to know that they wanted to accept yeah. that. It was Can we show that picture? Yeah, yeah, put it up. So here it is. Uh, the guys, uh, this is the representative of TFC. Yeah, the this is Moses. And this is the two guys from the team, uh, correct? Yes, those are, the, the, that's made... the uh, the pastor in the middle. He's with the, with the Lagos Islanders. And, the, okay. and, and, and uh, you know, we never, th this is the first time we actually got to talk yeah. with them and say hello. So this happened on its own, guys. So a player was bought with TFC, and it's Here a significant transfer. Our kid team and celebrating. Yeah. This is, I think, the third time in the world. And the, the, I, I, when I did a quick Google search, I was trying to see if we were first. I don't think we were first. I think there was two other small transfers that were done using cryptocurrency. But let's say we're in the first five transfers in the world. Imagine, guys, being in the first five phone calls made, yeah. you know, between heads of state or something. It's like it's a huge thing. And um, it's fitting, you know, that it, that it was uh, a Nigerian player from a Nigerian team. We have such a strong Nigerian community and they're going to go crazy now that they actually met some of our community members yeah. and the word is going to continue to spread down there and i hope thousands of transfers are made in the future with tfc and i hope that thousands of players insist that their salaries be paid in tfc because it has a limited supply yeah. it has a strong utility it has a strong give back to the community it's got an incredible branding it's got incredible potential and incredible community and incredible technology supporting it so this is again part of the backstory um Shout it out is to history mr vicent moses for putting uh for putting the deal yeah so yeah i guess this guy knows maybe uh well vicent he, moses, yeah. yes well yeah but it, it 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 was afterwards that he's working with them okay yeah he didn't know them beforehand he met them afterwards i introduced him to them afterwards once I saw them. So I'm so happy about that. Yeah. And everybody should be as well. So now think about where we've come, you know, as a community that we have people in so many different countries. Uh, you can see, you know, we got 592 people oh, wow. from Here's all around the world news. here. Fandario is from my street in Lagos. All right. All right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. So, and, and, you know, he's, he's in the app now as well. Yeah. <laughs> and the word's going to spread because when people, when, you know, I sat with David and I showed him the app and he, and he loved it. How can you not love it? You know, uh, Brian is asking, what was the fee? It was, it was a significant, I don't want to disclose it because it's, uh, but it was, it was, a, it was a significant fee. It wasn't, it wasn't uh, a small. Yeah. And um, so, you know, it was a real, real act of faith by that team, a real act of vision by yeah. the Lagos Islanders. And actually they're, they, they have connections as well. Yeah. It's like El Salvador accepting the first country that accepts. It is. Uh, it's, it's the same, it's the same uh, philosophy behind it. It's, it's the first, it's going to cause a domino effect. We hope for sure but i think uh, oh yeah no no i mean we know it's happening it's just the first time it happens so we've got we've got a we've got a scottish premier league club accepting tfc for tickets and merchandise we have hundreds of businesses on the ground in yeah. countries all around the world and now we have players being um bought with tfc yes. and soon i hope that we'll have our first announcements i'm sure it'll happen of players being paid in tfc as the players start yeah. to discover its power you're going to get people that want to get paid in TFC, but it's real progress and congratulations to everybody yeah. in the community who's, you know, stuck with this vision and helped build this community up and is with us on every step of the journey. It's all together, our community making huge progress. Uh, I think this mail about it goes out next week, Bitrix, uh, 
I hope they understand the traders eventually, you know, the traders are getting more and more info about us. Oh, we have a great new website coming out too. Yeah. I think it's going to make a big difference. Maybe the new website will be out on Friday, everybody. It's going to take us up a lot because, you know, um, we, we, we have to do a little bit better to communicate how powerful this is quicker. And our new website's kind of super punchy. It's going to really help help explain what and show a level of caliber quality and communication quality that we haven't had in graphical quality. It's pro. Yeah. It's pro level. It's what we deserve as a community. And thanks to the guys up in uh, Czech Republic, some real Francis superstars. Francis ask a cool it. question we haven't uh, seen before. Can we have a Panda House Coding Institute? Oh, that's a good idea. <laughs> that's about coding. Yeah. Well, we haven't. Any coders, we're happy to enlist. Go up there on the top. We also have uh, we have Ashuri from Philippines. Yeah. Hello. It's probably 12.30 a.m. Thanks a lot for joining us. Uh, we really look forward to get Philippines going. I think we have about 900 people there. Mm -hmm. And once we hit 1,000 in there, we just need some people in the Philippines to stand up a little bit in there and start to spread the word and get it to a thousand it's hard work but once you crack thousand it kind of gets on its way towards five and um and then it, you know it starts going at higher progression yeah so we're closing down in a couple of minutes guys so i saw a lot of questions about panda so we wanted to say about the panda token uh indonesia 1250 yeah oh yeah <laughs> so and then we have Ikin talking about uh Besiktas and yeah. uh we have big plans for Turkey as well. Um, you know, we've got so much in the pipe, man. We have so many things that we're just clearing the the, the backlog of things. Uh, it's almost unbelievable how yeah. much things are happening. Um, you know, we're the energy is building up. Uh, things are going to start moving a little faster yeah. now. Through the next six months, you're going to see more actions. And of course, the community helps a lot. Yeah, uh, maybe uh, ninety-five percent of the whole. We uh, have uh, gr plans about Greece. Oh yeah, we're waiting for Greece to wake up. We need we need some uh, advocates in Greece. So um, and you it know, continues. Yeah. So as as I was saying, fifth of uh, the fifth of July, we're gonna officially launch our NFT platform, our NFT marketplace within the app, uh, which you're gonna use. At, you, you're gonna use the Panda token there. So a lot of details are coming up for that as well with, yeah. the, with the new website as well. Well, yeah. I'll tell them about that. I saw somebody in there from Canada. Uh, hello uh, to uh, Tippy in Canada. Let me know what part of Canada that you're in over there. Yeah. That's uh, hopefully... Bangladesh, yeah. yeah. Hello, Almost, Bangladesh. Yeah. It's 11.51 p.m. It's great to have everybody on the chat. I hope everybody's getting some good info. Uh, we covered, you know... The crypto war, um, the good things that are happening in crypto, the size of that market, what's the dollar is going under pressure. TFC is progressing really, really well. And um, we're, we're about to come into the public eye, as I predicted to everybody, you know, more and more people are discovering us. Um, we need people in India and Philippines and Canada, everywhere to keep um, the grassroots building uh volunteer in your chat room guys if you're you want to help um we have some great administrators that can help and uh just slowly brick by brick you know we're a community bring people in one by one show them the app um and you know it, it works out you know it's uh it, 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 it it's this is how it's done yeah. this is the power of community it's done through the people we're going through the grassroots of course we're going to have some big clubs pushing us but kenya. i'm not going to say which oh, wow. one yet yeah we got kenya, kenya. Yeah. we got so many so many places we know we know what's happening uh with plans for india absolutely yeah. we have we have big plans for india and um you know the 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 how, how do we say it? Um, ah, Rome, Italy. Yeah. Wonderful. Um, we got to get our Italian translation going in there, too. That's an another thing. We've got a bunch of translations sitting there that we're ready to put live. We're going to start doing that. Update on trivia. It'll be live on Saturday. And um, I'm... Somebody else. Yeah, update for that on Saturday. Yeah. 
So then also, uh, you mentioned the July 5th. Yeah. So um, our NFT platform, guys, inside of the TFA will be live on July 5th. Now, uh, our NFT platform is simple and powerful. Um, obviously, it's super attractive for football players. And of course, you can imagine we've already got discussions with a number of football players to put the first NFTs forward for you guys to grab. And remember, you're going to grab them with Panda. You're going to buy these NFTs with Panda. So Panda is used within the app to buy the NFTs. You can take those NFTs, you can sell them inside the app, you can take them outside the app, you can sell them on other platforms as well. The NFTs are portable. So um, we expect a lot of NFTs to be created and initially offered for sale in our platform because we have a really good system for getting the first people in. It'll almost be like a Midnight Madness auction, you know, it'll pop up and people can bid on it. And these will be, you know, pro athletes putting their, you know, really good stuff forward. So you get the first chance in the world to grow grab these nfts from athletes that can have a lot of value and if you want to sell them inside the football app yeah. platform for panda you can do it you can cash the panda there's no restriction on it you can take it out you can send it to pancake swap and switch it for bnb and send it to finance and cash out uh, or you can transfer the nft to another platform and put it for sale so you can grab a an NFT, put it for sale yeah. on another platform. So it's very flexible. It's very, very powerful. And to go along with it, we're going to have a lot of athletes promoting on July 5th. So you want to grab some Panda before July 5th. I'm giving you guys the advance notice so you don't get mad at me later and say, why didn't you tell us? I'm here to tell you that I told you. <laughs> <laughs> you should be grabbing Panda. Of course, you know, you're earning TFC and many of you are buying TFC. Um, you also should get some Panda because when we do the July 5th promotion, it's going to be, there could be as many as a hundred athletes that are mentioning um, about, you know, go grab some Panda, promoting yeah. the Panda. And uh, they might be from other sports as well, as well as football players. And some of them will be putting NFTs up and some yeah. of them will just be trying to um, help uh, promote our overall platform because we give back to sports, we give back to the community and that's athletes, they love that. So we're right in line with their values about giving back to the community, giving back to the sporting community and using really good, uh, good digital ways to go about it. So July 5th is gonna be huge. Get some Panda before July 5th. Don't wait till July 6th, July 10th because there'll be a lot of people coming in to grab Panda at that point in time and then with your panda you can use it to buy nfts and we're going to have first minted collections from really really good pros that you yeah. won't be able to get anywhere else first so we're going to have a good fun with that that's just yet one more thing that is happening yeah uh so in our platform the third part of the code guys as we're closing in uh let's see here so this is the last part of the code I hope everyone got the whole, uh, all the three parts. Uh, is there gonna be a question in TFC Worldwide? Uh, I saw a question. Yeah, before, yeah. yeah okay. we're gonna we're gonna put up. A, I'm gonna not in the worldwide in the. Uh, oh yeah, in the bonus room. In the bonus room. Yeah. So so those of you who got the code, we'll see you guys over in the uh, the bonus room. I'm gonna load it up now. Uh, don't share it with anybody who didn't join the chat. You know, uh, make sure you subscribe as well. Um, show some yeah. love on the on yeah, the subscribe, subscribe button yeah and um yeah so share the video for sure yes well, share the video there's a lot of good info in here about our community about what's happening in crypto uh promote it out there and uh the last code uh put it up again just for the, oh, the ones the, up there yeah yeah everybody take a look up there the last code is fw um you got two three four minutes to go ahead and find your way over into the bonus room in two or three or four minutes, I'll load it up. But make sure you also do the subscription, um, hit the like button, uh, you know. And um, uh, uh, yeah, great to uh, great to see everybody. Um, everybody have a fantastic week. And uh, yeah, we're gonna see you back on Sunday for sure. Yeah, we'll be back uh, on Sunday. So I'm gonna put up the photo. I'm gonna turn up a little bit the music just to end it. <laughs> And we're going to see everyone on Sunday again. Have a nice day, guys.